Let's uh, go through the rendering settings now. To get to the rendering settings, we can click on this little icon here, Display Render Settings. And inside here, we want to make sure that we're rendering using uh, Hardware 2.0. The top here is if you have any render layers. Um, we're just using the master layer, so we'll stick to that. And we want to be inside of the Hardware 2.0. So the common tab, uh, which indicates things like uh, aspect ratio, size, and so forth, is where we're going to start. The first thing we want to make sure is we set that the output transformation is set to sRGB, because we're just going to work with uh, um, sRGB gamma, uh, color space. So just to show you what's going on here, if I render this now, this uh, single frame, like so, what we're seeing is a doubling of the sRGB curve that therefore it's, um, you know, looking washed out. But if you turn off the sRGB from the viewpoint render, now we're seeing what's happening when we go to, you know, render this frame, which is what we want. We want to save this image. So this is just an indication of what it looks like with sRGB. So if we have that turned off and we render that again, we get the single sRGB. We'll have that turned on. We'll keep it at sRGB. Now, inside here, this is where we can put our prefix for our naming convention. If we right click in this space, we can insert things like the scene name and if we use a forward slash key, we can then create a folder inside our folder structure. So you'll notice that everything gets rendered into the images folder, but this is going to create a custom folder setup. So scene name is a good idea and maybe camera as well. So now if we can look up here, we've got our camera and we've got an underscore 003. Now, to get this working for a sequence, we go to File Animation Extension. So by default, it's set to single frame, but we want to take that to name underscore number dot extension. And that's going to work well for us. Image file size, uh, type um, for, for this, I'd be happy with a PNG because I'm not going to over edit the color correction or do some grading. If I wanted the full color range as much as possible, then I'd go for a open EXR, maybe a 32-bit float or a 16-bit half float. But in this case, it's not that important. So we're just going to go with the PNG. We've got frame padding here, just gives us extra zeros in our numbering, which is good. And down the bottom here, we've got our start frame and our end frame. So in this case, because the rendering takes so short a time, I can add an extra, extra frames to our render. I think our camera movement only goes to 120, but I'm just going to add a couple of seconds in there. So I've got a bit of editing space without having to uh, stretch out single frames. Uh, there we go. And now the next step is to set up our cameras. So rendable camera, um, we can change the camera, but if we scroll down, we can also add additional cameras. So I'm going to do that for our three cameras. And in this case, we're starting with camera two, three, and four. Now we don't need the alpha channel and we don't need set depth in this case. So now we just make sure our image size is correct. So we want to use HD 1080. And that's all set up and ready to go. Now we'll just go through our hardware settings just to make sure everything's working. Um, I have got clamped textures on. I, I'll just turn that off um, because I don't need to clamp it because we're not looking at it through the viewpoint. So we're rendering it through batch, which allows us to uh, render higher detail and so forth without having to visually see it within the viewport. Also, we'll go down into screen uh, ambient occlusion, make sure that's turned on, and anti-aliasing, we'll bring that uh, to four, that's fine. And we've also got motion below inside there, 
and I'm happy with the, the default for that. So with that done, it's now time to batch render. To batch render, we'll just close that down and save our scene. And I'll just go incremental save. And now we can go to the rendering menu set, go to rendering and choose batch render. When we tick on that, it will ask us to save it. And down the bottom here, you can see ren rendering with Maya hardware 2.0. We'll open up the script editor and we'll wait till that renders out. Okay, 12 minutes later, the rendering is complete, which is pretty good for three cameras at 150 frames. So not much time at all uh, in regards to rendering time. So this is the advantage of using hardware 2.0 as your renderer. Now to have a look at our files we can go into the images folder and the the name of the file itself is the folder in this particular case and I've put all the cameras in the in there as well so I've got camera two uh, and three and four and so on. Now if I want to check the sequence a way we can do that is using fcheck, which is Maya's uh, image viewer. And from here we can go open sequence and we can preview the sequence inside of here if we want to just check think how things are going. So I'll just grab camera two, the first frame, and open that. And it'll pull in the group as a sequence. So once we've previewed our sequence, we can then bring it into a compositing software like After Effects or Premiere and uh, start to edit our footage together. 